So SummerSlam is this Sunday, and I can't imagine I'm the only one that kind of gets this really weird vibe about it. One, it feels like the show is coming up way earlier than expected compared to some other years, which, which is fair, as it is, and it just feels off. And then you look at the card for the show. This is supposed to be a Big Four pay-per-view, and it feels like anything other than Big Four worthy. The buildup has been lackluster to be generous, and many of the matches just aren't that appealing on the surface themselves. And then when you talk about this being a big show, you look at some of the things, some of the people that aren't even scheduled as of the time of this recording to appear or wrestle and just don't really know what's going on. As, as far as I could tell, neither one of the tag title matches is booked on the show, although I would assume one or both of them might find a way onto the pre-show. Daniel Bryan's not booked on this show. Drew McIntyre is not booked on this show. Braun Strowman is not booked on this show. Samoa Joe is not booked on this show. The New Day are not booked on this show. Roman freaking Reigns is not booked on this show. Doesn't that feel really weird that you're going into a big four pay-per-view and guys that you have invested a lot of effort, energy, and resources in in recent years like Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, The New Day, Braun Strowman, Recently, Drew McIntyre, Samoa Joe, none of them are booked. You look at the card that you've got, and you wonder if you could have found a way, especially since the show is going to be four, four plus hours any dang ways, to have put some of them people on the show and take some of the other people off. But as of now, they're not on it, and I, I, maybe that's contributing a little bit to the weirdness of the vibe of this. Because you look at, let's use Roman Reigns as a perfect example. This is a guy, clearly, the company is very much behind. Could you ever imagine the WWE, let's even go with John Cena, having a healthy John Cena not be booked on a Big Four pay-per-view? That just doesn't sound right. That sounds weird. That sounds stupid. Because it is. Now, where they could go with the whole Roman Reigns angle, you might very well end up with something on SummerSlam. But at the moment, the way it looks on the surface right now, it's just all types of weird. Which, again, is largely what the show feels like. Like the SmackDown Women's Championship. Ember Moon versus Bayley. Like, Bayley's just throwing out a challenge to Ember Moon. Just kind of feels like out of nowhere. And, and ooh, I guess. Reportedly, Vince isn't a big fan personally of Ember Moon. Which would suggest that Bayley's going to win. But, I don't know. That's, it feels like a match that could be on the pre-show. You got Finn Balor taking on the fiend Bray Wyatt. Really curious to see how Bray Wyatt does wrestling in the mask, which all reports indicate he is going to do. And you look at this, this match is all about Bray Wyatt. How is that character going to translate to actually working in the ring? Is it going to be too slow, too methodical? Is he not going to incorporate enough elements of the character? How is this going to be? I can at least say for the first time in a long time, I'm really interested in what Bray Wyatt is doing. So that I will take as a positive, and I am curious to see how this match plays out. And we all know who could win, should win, has to win here. Right? Right? Right, right, right. The U.S. Championship, Ricochet versus AJ Styles, probably will be one of those matches in the middle of the card that does pretty well. But I don't know, just something's missing for me. Something's missing for me. Very similar to Trish Stratus and Charlotte. Now you look at that match, you, you have all intents and purposes knowing that Trish is just being fed to Charlotte, which just makes you want to vomit anyways, because that dude don't need any more. Just saying. Uh, but the whole dynamics of this are just... like It would make more sense to me, in theory, to say Beth Phoenix versus Charlotte than it would Trish Stratus versus Charlotte. Whereas Trish Stratus facing a Sasha Banks at SummerSlam would have made infinitely more sense. That's not the match we got. I just can't imagine Trish versus Charlotte is the match that anybody would want. Maybe at least if nothing else, you're in Canada so the crowd will really be behind the legend that is Trish Stratus and really against Charlotte. So maybe the dynamics of that could work here. That at least is what it could have going for Because other than that, I could care less. Um, Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon, it sounds like at the moment, is just going to be a regular wrestling match, which makes you pause. 
because it involves Shane. But the thing about Shane is, as much as y'all don't like him being on TV, and as much as the character's not working, is he has a way to tend to go out there and kill himself and make a match work. Now, to me, what I'm interested here in is WWE going to go with the cheap thrill payoff and accomplish very little by having Kevin Owens win here? Or are they going to do what I feel like is the right thing to do that would make Kevin Owens' character infinitely more interesting, even, yes, it had the byproduct of Shane McMahon continuing to be on TV, and that is Kevin Owens losing this match. Because the stipulation is if he loses, he quits. Drew McIntyre's not booked. Elias isn't booked. Have them fuck over Kevin Owens, help Shane McMahon, and have Kevin Owens lose. You could sit there and literally run some type of angle for the next month, month and a half or two up to your debut on Fox with SmackDown in October. Roll the dice. Why not? Having Kevin Owens win here might give some people an instant gratification, but it will be hollow and relatively meaningless. If you really want to do something to establish Kevin Owens as a must-see character, the path and avenue to do that is by having him lose tonight. Not bringing him back on the next show either. Having him lose. You can fucking have him go to NXT and cut a promo there or wrestle people there. You can have him go to Evolve and do the same damn thing. You could have him sit there ringside October 2nd at the All Elite Wrestling Show up in D.C. and have him sitting front row because you know the cameras aren't going to be able to avoid him. Take all the attention away from that. Like if I'm in the position of booking this match and writing this character for Kevin Owens the next couple months, that's the type of crap I'm doing. I'm not having him win one match here and negating any positive momentum that I could have gotten out of this. I'm just saying. Um, what else we got? Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch character post WrestleMania hasn't been all that interesting. Yeah, Natalia's Canadian, and sure, the crowd will be behind her, but ugh. Again, it's just one of these matches where both of the women's championship matches this time, the dynamics just don't really work for me. The other women's match on the show, there's three women's matches on the show, Trish and Charlotte, the dynamics of that don't work for me. There's none of these matches do anything for me. They just don't. Um, yeah, Natalia, Becky, I'm good. It's just, it's just weird. Uh, what's not weird, though is <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler you're next you're next and you better be too the hell with the long competitive match the hell with this and the hell with that and the hell with the notion or even the idea the modicum of a possibility of that wannabe never has been never will be fucking beating Goldberg the hell with it Dolph Ziggler doesn't matter this match doesn't matter so at least have Goldberg go in there and squash the shit out of him like the hell he should. Doing anything other than that is complete and total garbage. 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 Oh. Oh. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. The fact he's even getting a big four pay-per-view match in a somewhat featured spot almost makes me sick to my stomach. Let's move on to things that also give a lot of us heartburn and nausea, and that is Seth Rollins. I'm kidding, but I'm not. The Universal Championship match, Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar. You know, if Seth doesn't win this match, he looks really, really stupid for guaranteeing uh, that he was going to win this match. You know, this, in theory would be the way that you would do the obviously necessary and required Seth Rollins character turn if you had a way to align him with somebody or bring somebody in to help him. This is where you do it and have Seth Rollins beat Brock Lesnar again. That's what should happen. I doubt it will. So probably be a match that goes 10 to 15 minutes and a lot of suplexes and a lot of boredom and Brock wins, boo freaking who. Like, my God, you want to talk about a guy kind of falling from grace here over the past few months. It's Seth Rollins. His words, his actions, his character, like all of it, none of it is working. Really, the best thing you could do at this point 
would be to have Lesnar beat the shit out of Seth Rollins again to the point where you have Seth Rollins off of TV for a few months. Because it could be one of those situations where absence makes the heart grow fonder. If you're not going to do a character change with Seth, you got to shake up stuff and do something different. Because right now, this crap ain't working. And there is no way, and I mean no way, that people could be that excited about this match. I just, I just personally cannot see it. And I wonder if they're going to sit there and have this match main event of the show. It's not the main event of the show. But, based off of the length of these shows, it might not be the worst thing in the world to have it go on last. Because to me, and I don't think I'm the only one, the real main event of SummerSlam is Randy Orton versus Kofi Kingston. You've got a story that stretches back a decade. You've got a story on many levels that people can identify with, people can agree with. They can identify with not liking Randy Orton and the old notion of the Breakfast Club putting people down that they didn't like and they didn't think were deserving of the spot because they did that shit. So there's real life elements to this. There's also the real life element of Kofi is now the champ, but you worry now that it's one of the previous fortunate four, one of the Breakfast Club members, if Vince is going to go back to doing things the way he wants to do and taking the belt off the black man. So people are invested in that and carrying it. Like to me, on so many different levels, the chemistry that these two guys have had in the ring in the past, that, that this is the main event of SummerSlam. Period. Now that said, just because it's the main event, in this case, because of the current structure of WWE shows, and in particular the length of the shows, this match probably should go on in the middle of the card. I know that runs counterintuitive, oh, the main event goes on last, and that is absolutely true. But damn it all, do you really want this match to go on last when you've had to sit through three and a half hours potentially of garbage? And you're gassed and tired, especially if you watched NXT TakeOver on Saturday night. As far as who you should have win this, ah, I really, really could go either way on this one. Because if you could say, well, Kofi hasn't exactly been blockbuster box office as champion, you're definitely not lying there. But Randy Orton's not going to be either. You know, having Randy Orton win feels like a return back to the bullshit of days gone by. And, you know, think about it like this is, who do you want being your champion that represents you when you go to Fox in October? It's just really, really weird. Um, Storyline-wise, especially with Orton talking about he's the one that ended Kofi's push a decade ago because he wasn't ready for that spot, and he's about to do it now, you could roll with Orton, and it could work. You could also roll with Kofi and say this is Kofi's revenge. Like It feels like one of these weird type of matches where no matter what you do, even with all the story and history behind this, that no matter who you have win, people are going to feel like they've been disappointed but if that's the case then at least have Kofi win and let it continue if you're going to say well he hasn't been box office as champ like I said that is true and who the hell is box office in this company right now so what the hell difference does it make Orton as champion yeah I've been there and done that and we've seen plenty of lengthy lame ass Randy Orton title reigns it's okay for Kofi to have one lengthy lame ass title reign in his time isn't it isn't it I don't know. But beyond question to me, it is the main match of SummerSlam. No matter where the hell it ultimately goes on the card, if it goes on last, it deserves to. I selfishly hope that it does it because I want to have enough energy to be able to enjoy the match without having to sit there trying to struggle through it at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. But what say you? What do you expect out of SummerSlam? What are your expectations going into it? How are you feeling about the show? Do you agree that the vibe is kind of off or do you feel like... It's good, and the Schleg Daddy is just an angry wrestling man. I don't know. But I'll be here after SummerSlam to review the show as only I can, because remember, OTR Essential, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. I'm out.